In this video, we're going to learn about one of the most important aspects of the JavaScript language, something called variables. Variables are, in a nutshell, virtual containers. Think of a bag or a box in JavaScript that's designed to basically hold information. You create variables, you create these virtual containers to place information into them. You want to do this because for you to be able to work with a lot of uh, JavaScript, you need to basically put things into these virtual containers to use them. I'm not going to get into the details about this right now because uh, it's probably easier that we actually do a couple JavaScript variable examples and then we'll get back to why we need to use variables in the first place. What you need to take away from this now is that a variable is simply a virtual container for information, information that you stick into this container. Let's jump into some code now and we'll actually see variables in action. So here we are of our familiar script block. And so let's start off by creating a variable, var. Now this is a keyword. In JavaScript and many other languages, you have a set of reserved words that are called keywords because they provide a key. So they provide functionality. They basically tell the JavaScript engine that we're doing something in particular. Var is one of those keywords, and that basically is a, a specific instruction to JavaScript. And that instruction is create a variable. So you need to give a variable a name. So I'm going to call it uh, first, first name, something like that. Here we go. And we end with a semicolon. We save that. And let's preview that in IE7. Um, what's the name of this page? This page. You know what? I'll just do a, with the web browser. How to, so hold on. Now, IE7 here is basically asking me if I want to run the script. I'm going to go, yeah, yeah, run, run the script. There we go. So nothing happens because we haven't done anything with the variable. So we got a variable and we just basically told JavaScript, create a variable, which is a, which is a virtual container, of course, and give that variable a name, a first name. So now that we have uh, the variable name, you can think of it as a handle, like a handle in a frying pan. It allows us to manipulate that container. So what I'm going to do as I'm going to fill that container with a first name, my first name, Stefan. So here we go. This is basically telling JavaScript that we want to insert into the first name variable the text Stefan. So now that we have this done, let's actually use the variable in something semi-practical. So we're going to go back to our tried and true tried and true alert and we're going to just put in first name all right this is simple enough let's see what it looks like in action all right so we have our windows internet explorer alert it says stefan okay nothing special but as you can see instead of putting in the text stefan directly into alert we use the variable and javascript is smart enough to know about what we want to alert to the uh, to the crowd, if you will, we want to display whatever information is inside our first name. So we could change this to uh, Nick. We refresh the browser again, Nick. So that's uh, not very exciting, but uh, we can change this now. So look what we can do. For instance, we could create another variable, bar last name, and then we could load last name with a value and I'm going to say M-I-S-C-H-O-K. Now note that I have the semicolon at the end of each of these lines, right? Each line of code, by the way, is called a statement. It's a nerd term for a line of code. And you can think of it as you're making a statement and JavaScript, the engine knows that it's the end of a statement because you got the semicolon here. So I got first name and last name. So now we want to display the last name. So we can do that by putting in 
last name in the alert. Now, bec the way alert works, if you're putting in more than one variable, you have to use this plus sign. And we're going to get into that a little bit later, but just take it from me. So let's see how this looks. Mick Mischuk. Okay. So you notice, let me launch that again. You notice how there was like uh, no space here? That's not cool. So maybe we should add a little space. You see in JavaScript, a blank space is something that you have to add explicitly. So we're going to have to add another plus and put a little two colons like the two um, quotes here rather now you see in JavaScript anything in between quotes is considered text you know text that you type nerds will call the text strings and a space even a space is considered a piece of text and there are reasons for this so I'm not going to get into now but uh, just take it from me if that's the case so we just save that reload the page you see now you got a nice space here. I've introduced a few concepts already. I've introduced the concept of the variable. We know how to make a variable by using the var keyword, and then we use give it a name. We you know var is a keyword. We've learned about keywords now. It's one of those reserved words in JavaScript that tells JavaScript to do something. And we know that we can assign values to variables by using the equals. And we know that if we assign, but well, we can assign numbers. Let me just uh, create another variable. I just want to make a point. We'll var number. And uh, just end that off. And then go number. And the number equals six. And that will work too. Let's see if I load the page. Make this check. You notice how. I didn't use the variable number for anything, so it doesn't display. The only thing that displays is whatever we put in the alert. Now, but what we've done here by creating the variable number is we basically stored this value, 6. So where exactly are we storing these values? We are storing these values in your computer's memory. Think of RAM memory. you got to remember that RAM memory is basically... You know, you got 100 megs of RAM, well, 100 megs. That shows you how old I am. You got one gig of RAM or two gigs of RAM. And RAM is basically, think of it as a, an egg carton. There are, you know, times 10,000 or million or whatever it is. It's got all kinds of tiny little slots of memory, little virtual container spaces where you can hold information. So when you use the var keyword, you're basically telling JavaScript that you want to store some information in RAM, in and well, that's it. So what JavaScript does behind the scenes, it takes care of a lot of details that before modern languages like JavaScript came around, it takes care of a lot of details that the programmer used to have to do. And just to give you a taste, in the old days, when you wanted to store information in memory, and you have to store information in memory to be able to do, to do a lot of computing work, to do a lot of programming work, and you'll come to understand that as we go along, when you wanted to store stuff in memory, in the old days, you had to you had to basically go into the RAM, find a, fr a free spot, and you had to reserve some of these free spots, and then you could stick the information in there. It was up to the programmer to find the spots, to reserve enough space in memory, stick the stuff in there, and you had to remember where you put what information and what spot in the RAM. It's... Uh, I hope this is clear. Essentially, it was just a much more encumbering, uh, tedious process for programmers to actually store stuff in memory. Whereas with the var capability, with the variable capability that JavaScript has, by using the keyword var, you're basically telling JavaScript, okay, you're going to take care of all those details for us, and I just want you to hold some information, and I want you to uh, tag that information with the name, in this case, first name, and we're gonna and so in this second variable, I say tag that information whatever we're gonna be holding with the with the uh, tag of last name and so on. Now up here, you notice I just created a variable. I basically in these three such cases here, these three different variables, I basically told JavaScript create the variable, but 
Just reserve the spot in memory, but don't put anything in it yet. You only put stuff in memory when you actually use this equal signs, and then you point to some information. So in this case, we pointed to a number, number six. In this case, we pointed to some, well, in these two last cases, rather, we pointed to some text, you know, Nick and Mischa. So there's a lot to take in here. And I'm going to stop now because we're already around 11, 12 minutes. And we're going to, in the second part of this video, we're going to get into more detail about variables, why we're using them, how to use them. There's some more information to get out of this. If you're bored, please just bear with me a little while longer. We're almost done here because this is important because variables are used all the time, really in just about every modern programming language that there is out there. So uh, it's worth learning.